welcome back to online course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 20. So, this is all about the temporary structures. Previously, uh, uh, like in previous lectures, we have discussed about the compressive structure, then the tensile structure and also we discussed about the load bearing structures. Now, we move to uh, a different kind of you know structural term that is temporary. So, basically as the name suggests, uh, in this lecture we will be discussing about the structure which is just made for a small duration is uh, just to uh, you know uh, not for like uh, for you know staying for a longer duration or permanent. And we should also know the requirement uh, of different uh, structural uh, system to make those temporary structures and also the need of temporary structures to support uh, our you know some buildings or you know to give a form. So, let us start uh, with this particular lecture which is temporary structures. So, basically if you see the uh, need of temporary structures, so it helps in giving support to unsafe structures. So, many a times if a building is too old and over the period there will be some deterioration on structure. So, the building is considered to be very unsafe, this is one. Sometimes maybe due to some faulty construction or maybe the material used uh, was not of uh, the required uh, you know property, then also uh, your structure will become weak. So, for that uh, we need to support it with some temporary arrangement. So, temporary structure helps in uh, giving support to the unsafe building. In the second it uh, giving initial support to newly constructed structures. So, here uh, it is basically referred to the form work when we make the construction with concrete. So, when we mix up uh, the cement, sand, stone chip, uh, water and we prepare the concrete it will be uh, you know very uh, semi liquid form and will not really uh, able to you know uh, take the load. So, for that we have to make the form work uh, or shattering work uh, that will give the initial form of the structure and then we pour concrete on top of it and we wait till uh, the setting time. So, uh, depending on the position, depending on the material it may take from 7 days, 14 days or maybe 28 days to be uh, you know followed after curing of concrete. So, in order to make those columns, slab, uh, etcetera, so we also need to make some you know temporary construction with uh, the material can be of wood, plywood, it may be of steel uh, depending on the scale of the project, depending on the available resources with the developer uh, or the construction uh, partner. So, uh, that will also help into uh, give support to the newly construction. Uh, you know structural part. Also in making construction work easy, so this is something not really giving support to the structure, but it is giving you the framework. Many a times when we see a high rise building, so uh, always the question comes in the mind how like a person like paint at the you know at the height of the 30th floor or something like that or some repair work to be done, how to make it at that from external wall. So, we have seen such kind of arrangement like uh, they made uh, they can make uh, it with the bamboo or maybe the steel uh, you know component to just make some platform and then they work it. So, due to uh, that particular requirement we also need uh, such kind of temporal arrangement technically we call it scaffolding. So, if I broadly classify the temporary structure, so we will have two category, one is shoring, the other one is scaffolding. So, we have to understand each of these term very uh, carefully and um, like we should know different type of shoring and scaffolding uh, and we can make some difference what are the purpose. Where shoring is basically used to support your building, either it is unsafe or maybe to give initial strain to the building under construction. And the scaffolding is basically will help to make the construction work like laying the bricks, making plaster, uh, making some repair work or maybe some paint. So, different type of scaffolding depending on the height of the building, height of the structure, the scaffolding arrangement will vary, the material used will vary. 
So, in this lecture we will cover those issues. So, what exactly the shoring as already I mentioned the construction of temporary structure uh, required to support the unsafe structure. So, what exactly? So, we make a structural arrangement okay, which is not permanent for some duration may be until the building is retained to the safe position or like maybe dismantle and a new construction. So, in order to like uh, support those unsafe buildings, shoring is required and that is basically a temporary structures. So, when we uh, require it, when walls of a building develop sign of uh, bulging and leaning outwards. Okay, so, what exactly it means? Suppose, if we uh, see a building uh, is uh, basically the structure is too old or maybe due to faulty construction. So, or due to unequal settlement uh, underground. So, building will have a tendency to tilt uh, the outer side or maybe a part of the building is uh, showing a leaning towards something like it will fall. So, then a support to be given like we have seen uh, in uh, like in the compressive structure thing the flying buttresses. So, basically it is supporting the wall and anchor it to the ground. So, something some kind of arrangement to be done to uh, you know support this kind of thing. So, uh, this shoring is uh, one of the you know uh, structure that can be used to solve this purpose. Now, the next point is the when uh, your wall is uh, a defective wall. Suppose, uh, it got very much damp and very much porous and it is no, no longer be taking any kind of load rather uh, it will give some discomfort to the uh, in, uh, indoor uh, environment and we have to dismantle it. But in order to dismantle it we have to give the initial support to the slab or connecting structure so that we can easily remove the part uh, which is already damaged and then we reconstruct and then make our structure safe again. Uh, until uh, that part is rebuilt, so we can use the shoring. The other one is support the superstructure when large opening are required to be cut in a load bearing wall. So, what exactly it uh, does means? Like suppose if you, uh, if you have a load bearing wall and uh, as we uh, discussed in the you know load bearing structure lecture. So, uh, primarily all the load transfer from uh, the slab through the wall to the foundation. So, this particular wall is taking the maximum load. Now, the it ha should have the thickness to bear the load of the upper story. Now, say for example, you have to make the opening. So, we cannot simply cut one, uh, one opening uh, onto that particular wall and for that we have to initially support the slab, okay, which initially the wall was uh, taking the load. So, we have to give another support till that opening is made and the framework uh, like the door frame or the opening frame being installed properly till that time you have to support it. So, this is also a application of soaring to that. Now, also it gives support to the walls of two adjacent building. Uh, when say uh, we have a series of building and uh, what you need to do they are very close to each other and um, we have to dismantle the building in between these two. So, if we have say three buildings uh, and uh, you have to dismantle this particular building. So, in that case during the dismantle process and all uh, they may impact keep some impact and this you know two buildings uh, you know surrounding that the middle one may fall to towards each other. So, for that sometimes you have to make those structure stable ok. We have to give some temporary uh, support. So, that can be also done to shoring and depending on the position and the purpose, shoring is further divided in three parts. So, one is your racking shores, then flying shores and dead shores. So, in this case like um, though the names are very peculiar, but if we just try to understand by taking uh, the meaning of that. So, uh, we can probably uh, can understand it in a better way. So, racking means uh, sometimes you know we always keep our books uh, in the book and uh, if you notice it like uh, in a book when you 
put it. So, uh, when you have full number of books like enough number of books you can make it uh, in this particular parallel position, but most often if you take one book. So, others will try to you know uh, lean on the other book and make its stable position. So, this is basically the rack. So, considering this kind of inclined uh, stacking or racking, so the racking show is related to that. So, in a building when we see the temporary structure is placed in an inclined form to support uh, uh, the building. So, then this type of temporary structure uh, is called racking shore. When it is flying, so fly means it uh, relates to something in air. So, when a shoring arrangement is made such a way that there is no component touching the ground, we call it flying. And then dead shore is basically, uh, um, dead means uh, we can just relate it to the soil and here dead shore means whenever you have to you know make some changes uh, for the you know underground structures or something to uh, you know enhance the capacity of the foundation or you know rebuild the foundation. For that those kind of thing uh, we use the dead shore. In this case it is a combination of your uh, racking shores and the other props. So, in this picture now based on my deliberation you can easily guess that in this position like this is the shoring arrangement giving the support with some members. These members can be made of wood can be either steel or sometimes if the span is too large then we can go for the truss because truss and space frame this kind of you know uh, arrangements will uh, make it possible to even support uh, two buildings away from each other. So, there is no connection to the ground. So, this is uh, leading to your flying shore. In this case if you can see that this particular wall being supported with some you know members and they are inclined members. So, like you just compare it to the way we put the books in the you know our slope and racks. So, this is basically the racking shore and here if you see uh, that uh, what happened the replacement of the foundation. So, you can see the drawing the foundation uh, is shown in dotted line. So, the upper structure is uh, you know uh, be supported with the racking as well as uh, in order to replace it. So, also there is another arrangement with vertical and horizontal member. So, that it will give uh, support as a temporary foundation and then once it is made. So, gradually we will uh, remove this structure and make our structure uh, safe again with that rebuild. Come to the racking shore already I mentioned that it is also referred as the inclined shore. Now, what are the things normally uh, here? So, uh, it is basically the inclined members known as rackers are used to give lateral support to the wall. So, in this case the support is given like this. So, must be this wall is uh, having a tendency and showing a sign to lean towards this side and this will basically support this to make it in original position. So, what are the other things required? to make this kind of arrangement. So, first of all we need to have a wall plate and in this if you see carefully in this drawing. So, after this wall so you have some uh, wall plate ok it may be made of steel it may be made of wood that depends on uh, you know the severity of the structure height of the structure availability of the resources. Then the needle needle will help to you know connect it uh, your rackers to the wall. So, we will make some penetration and we just give some support some attachment with the wall. So, needle uh, is used to stitch. So, here also the purpose is the stitching this wall plate and rackers to the wall. Then wooden cleat is also used uh, where uh, you have to give the support ok to make it uh, you know very tight. So, cleat is normally being used uh, most of the cases for your wooden uh, you know joint or something. Now, sole piece uh, is uh, where we use at the bottom where we actually you know tie up all the rackers. The hoop iron is basically where you can uh, make those uh, you know rackers tied up 
the brace or bracing is something where you know with the uh, higher span you have to give some you know tight situation ok. So, you have to give some uh, tie bar uh, to you know connect all the rackers together. So, this is the bracing. So, when we discussed the bracing earlier, so in order to support the lateral load we use a diagonal. So, here it is something where we used uh, some you know uh, perpendicular to the inclination we use this ok and the rackers are the main components. So, like that we can support it the racking shore. Now, come to the inclination. So, it is always better to have a inclination of 45 degree that means, uh, the height of the building and uh, you know the point like it will make the 45 degree angle. So, this length and this height of the building will be equal. But most of the case, uh, if the building is too high, we cannot have this much horizontal space because this may be a road or this may be some space we cannot go beyond the boundary. So, then you may change it. So, basically it can have a range of 45 degree to 75 degree. So, in this case it is something like where you can imagine that this portion may be at 45, but the others are not because it is if it to be 45 degree then this will go up to this level or something. So, then uh, in that case we can introduce the uh, rider racker. So, rider racker is basically when uh, you need to change it. So, sometimes you can just use a bracing and change the racker uh, you know inclination at certain point. So, that you can also manage the horizontal space. Racker should be properly braced at intervals to give the you know stability to the shoring. Then size of the rackers will be determined based on the you know anticipated thrust. That's already I mentioned that how much uh, the load of the wall, the leaning, the overall condition based on that it will be decided. Now shoring may be spaced at three to four point five meter spacing to cover longer length of the bar. So, that means it is something like I have shown that in cross section. So, in a wall, so you should have multiple such rackers to support it, right. So, this spacing can be of of 10 feet or like 3 meter to 4.5 meter spacing. The sole plate should be properly embedded into the ground. So, in this case, if you see uh, this is really the you know the sole plate is embedded to the ground to give. Uh, that particular support, uh, whatever the thrust coming, so that will transfer to the sole plate to the ground. So, this is also very important aspect. Now, uh, the rider shows as I uh, was trying to draw here, it will be very clear that how it changes the inclination, so that it can manage it well. And this is a bigger picture how the needle and cleat will help to tie your rackers through the wall plate to the wall. So, this is uh, what uh, we try to discuss and here you can see that how complicated it looks like, but definitely it is made of steel and in this position they use some coupler will have some pictures afterwards as well to support it. This is another one where you can see that uh, how like in, in this place it is only the uh, iron uh, like your steel tube being used and here it is instead of that the you know the truss being used to support it with your horizontal member and inclined source and this is another one where it is also supporting a, a wall. So, sometimes for some heritage uh, you know structure where you do not really want to rebuild uh, with the new material then also you can give this kind of shoring to make it stable. Now, come to the flying shore at the name suggests that there will be no connection of any members to the ground. That means, suppose uh, there are two buildings and uh, the tendency they will try to lean towards each of them uh, or maybe something like you have to dismantle the part of the building here in between. So, you have to give initial support and then what you can do? You can just use your shoring at the top ok in a you know elevated or flying mode. So, in this case you call this as flying shore and depending on the structure uh, you know thrust and the span 
this shore will be of single flying shore or double flying shore uh, like this, this is a single flying shore. So, how it is made? So, horizontal members are being given and wall plate is the same, the cleat and needle will be same as the previous one. Along with that you have some you know, uh, you know inclined members. So, they are actually making the you know composition in such a manner that it will hold the load. So, like uh, it is something uh, you can just imagine like uh, where you know two, two particular walls are coming towards you and you just put your hand and put the pressure to keep them separated. So, something like that is there. So, wall plate, needle, widgets, sole uh, piece, strut, horizontal source, they are uh, the members of this. So, in this case, if you see uh, the arrangement is of single shore. Now, in this system, wall plates are placed against the wall and secured to it. Horizontal strut is placed between wall plates and it is supported by a system of needle and cleats, then inclined strut are supported by the needle at the top and uh, by straining piece at their feet. So, here if you see that uh, this is basically your horizontal strut and this inclined strut, now they are at the top they are fixed with the needle and here it is with the straining seal. So, they are actually uh, you know giving support in that manner. Now, the width of the straining piece is same of the strut. So, it has uh, some specification and it may vary uh, based on the material to be used for that. Now, when the distance between two walls are too much, then uh, probably the truss, the single strut will not help. Then probably we have to go for the truss or space frame. So, this is something where you need to give more support. So, that is why instead of a single flying shore, so here it is basically your double flying shore use. Okay. So, let us see this uh, picture and uh, you can see that uh, though this building looks like good, but this building having a very poor condition. So, in this site the racking shores is used because they have some space, but this is somewhat like uh, we cannot have it some other utility may be. So, for that they are making some kind of arrangement like this and that was also cross sections we have to create such multiple uh, you know such flying shore uh, like uh, in a multiple uh, numbers depending on some spacing. So, that it will uh, give the support to the deteriorated or the damaged building or the unsafe structure. Coming to the dead shore. So, dead shore uh, it is uh, basically used to render vertical support to the walls, roof, floors, okay. when basically the wall has to be removed or maybe some foundation to be uh, you know extended. So, this is something the extended picture. So, where it is a combination of uh, all. So, this is something where you can see that flying shore is there, this is the racking shore. Uh, is there. So, flying and racking both are there along with that they are giving some horizontal support or temporary support as a foundation uh, before we just really you know make correction to those you know structure. So, this is also very useful uh, shoring or temporary structure. The materials or the parts of the shore is almost same as because we are using multiple combination to that. So, dead shore support the weight of the structure above and that is why it is also required to support all the components separately. So, that it will not really be heavy on the structure. The beams called needles are placed into the hole and supported with the vertical you know props. So, vertical props if you see in this, these are the vertical props that will support the structure. Okay, the uh, here we can also use the timber or else we can use the steel tube or sometimes if it is heavy again the truss. So, in this case also uh, there are other parts like the dead shore stand away from the wall okay, uh, either side so as to allow working space. So, because when you repair uh, your structure, so you need some space where the uh, you know the workers can uh, work uh, comfortably so that the spacing of those vertical um, props to be placed so that there will be enough gap uh, to work with. Then the props are tightened by the folding wedges 
uh, provided at their base and they are connected to each other. Then before the dismelting work is started all those windows and other openings are well shattered. And another important thing in this is very vital that is the vibration. So, during the work, so when you go for the reworking or rebuilding there will be lots of vibration. So, during that that will impact the temporary structure. So, we have to take care of that and properly um, we have to tie all those you know component together. So, that it can also resist those vibration during the reconstruction or cutting any portion of the bearing wall or something. So, here if you can see that uh, this is a, a picture where a build, you know, like a temple is already you know very you know uh, serious condition. So, how this is being supported? So, this is basically the rackers they provided and uh, inside that they also put uh, something. So, here it is nothing related to the rebuild, but to support the heritage. Here if you can see that uh, it is being provided uh, with a timber batten uh, to just repair this particular you know basement structure. So, here if you can see uh, how that can be made. So, with the you know wooden batten being used and then in order to uh, you know support it. So, we have to increase the base. So, uh, the head plate being used to support it. So, the slab to be supported. So, some uh, larger base to be provided at the top at the bottom. So, that it will not slip during vibration or any such uh, you know work. So, this is all about the dead shore. Now, come to the underpinning. Here basically the underpinning is the new uh, work okay, uh, underneath an existing structure, underneath the existing structure without disturbing the stability. So, in this case uh, basically it is all referred to the reconstruction of the wall. So, if you see in this image the previous position of uh, your uh, foundation the footing is at this level and now the new one is extended to this. So, for that the whole superstructure to be supported with the props, with the racking shores, with the you know horizontal and vertical uh, you know support. So, these props being used to support the slab and all. So, basically whenever we do any alternation and give support to the superstructure. Uh, so, this particular arrangement is called your underpinning. So, here you can see uh, such kind of thing where it is being supported initially. Okay. So, the building so that they can do some repair work. So, in this case maybe you can use simple uh, like uh, the iron uh, or the steel section or sometimes we also go for the hydraulic section to create uh, like take the pressure of this and then strengthening the foundation can take place or sometimes you know uh, like you. Uh, just uh, try to create the basement afterwards the building is built then also this kind of underpinning can be used will be useful to make the construction easy. Now, come to the second part that is the scaffolding. So, in this section this is not nothing to related to give support to the structure. So, temporary rigid structure having platform raised up to the building increase in height okay, and here the scaffolding uh, like say uh, how it will help us. So, it enables the machine to work in different stages of the building. So, first like we lay the brick and then the plaster then the paint. So, all these stages like how the work processes and this scaffolding will keep on you know increasing at the height of the building. So, whenever you uh, increase uh, your height of the building the construction is in progress. So, from one first floor to second floor it will also take uh, the different shape and size as per the construction. And then also not only the different work, but it will also help to you know carry the material and uh, you know uh, to transport the material. So, sometimes at the very huge height um, you use some temporary structure where like manually people can bring those materials or maybe with some certain lift or maybe with some uh, other means which just transport the material. So, here um, this is something what we can see that this is your uh, some uh, sculpture uh, from uh, the Rio de Janeiro. Uh, so, in this case if you see that uh, for the repair work and all 
how efficiently this particular system being made. So, this is basically the scaffolding and here the steel is used and there are different platform and the staircase to get access to the top level and for any construction, newly construction it is to be the same and even for the repair work. So, this is very well designed and that to be designed this temporary structure and this is again under the scaffolding. So, if you go to the type of scaffolding, so here it is the like divided mostly in the brick layer scaffold, machine scaffold, steel or tubular scaffold, needle scaffold and wood scaffold. So, what exactly they so we will uh, try to understand that with some schematic uh, cross section. So, brick layer scaffold is a very simple one. So, where like uh, basically what you need to do when the uh, wall is constructed, so we use some uh, you know standard and laser. So, what are the standard and what are the lasers? So, standard are basically your vertical uh, members of this particular framework and laser are the horizontal. So, they are tied up and along with that uh, to give support to the wall. So, you can see that many uh, times like during construction we uh, put some hole, okay, we just miss some brick portion so that we can give support. So, this all uh, you know uh, members which are connecting this frame, this you know laser and your standard to the wall with a put lock. And if the structure is too high then probably due to the wind load, the lateral load it is not safe only to connected to the wall. So, we just use the bracing. So, give more stability and whenever we want to work something we also use some platform or the boarding. So, this is also required where one can do the plastering or some kind of you know uh, alternation to uh, those brick work and all. So, this is designed and the gap between these two will be determined based on the you know acceptance of the gap. So, that one can really uh, you know climb on each layer and this is uh, very much uh, you know familiar in most of the cases and I guess that all of you have seen this kind of arrangement. So, this is the brick layer. So, uh, like the brick work and the put lock is the main wall. Now, sometimes if it is something like your brick wall uh, is uh, not being used to use the put lock, then you make your scaffold uh, separate stand alone. So, in this case what you do? So, in this case we used uh, instead of a single there is no connection to the wall like the previous the put lock. So, here we have the standard and then in this case put lock is not connected to the wall right and then we use some inclined you know rackers to support it ok. So, there is no connection with the wall. Uh, and then we use the same boarding and all. So, this is something different from the previous one. Previous one we have connection to the wall. So, the small punctures made to the wall and we connect this framework. Here it is stand alone separated with the inclined member. It is only possible when you have sufficient space okay, um, available uh, from the building. But suppose it is just next to your uh, you know some road important road where like people are moving or something like that we cannot really use this kind of racker. So, then we have to move for something else. So, in this case it is the steel and tubular scaffold. So, earlier it was something maybe of made of bamboo or something. So, here the thing is something different. Uh, the only difference is that that instead of those you know uh, tying up the knot. So, if you see these are uh, fixed with the knot suppose some rope is being uh, used to uh, tie those laser and standard. So, in this case the coupler being used. So, they are uh, having different uh, you know joints and then with that you have the mechanism to tie it up as per the requirement. The advantage of steel and tubular scaffold is that you can reuse for multiple time. When you use your bamboo or something, so it is restricted to some height and then you have to tie it up and it will not that much uh, you know reusable after certain use you have to dismantle it. But there it is available with standard you can adjust the height and then the rest of the things is pretty same. So, here also you have uh, the coupling what I mentioned the base plate so that you can 
put your uh, you know tubular section uh, on a particular plate so that it will not slip during uh, the work and all and the bracing is the same uh, what we used earlier. Now in this case the steel and tubular scaffold this is another type this type is where also you use this particular support to the wall ok. So, uh, this is one but in this case it is again a frame. So, instead of one so we use two kind of setup and make it like uh, a stage ok a platform and if you see uh, from the side the section is something like that. So, where there is no connection to made to the wall. So, it is similar to the second category that we discussed in this. So, now it is made with the steel and tubular scaffold the uh, you know maximum uh, number of components are the same in this case. So, it is again uh, the same example in detail ok. Now, the needle scaffold is something else where like you uh, cannot really access to the ground because of the busy road or something and then something to be done at the top. So, uh, stating something like making something from the ground unnecessary you are investing cost and complexity. So, somewhere like we can use a big needles to put that needles inside your structure give this support with the props and then uh, like with inclination you can fix it with the seal level and then you make your scaffolding for repairing the upper structure. So, it has no connection with the ground. So, this is something different from the others other few other categories that we discussed they always have a connection with the ground, but here it is not. The purpose is that you have to make some correction at the top not at the ground level and at the same time there is no such uh, provision to make those structure from the ground or it will hamper the daily life. Like that also you can uh, have the wooden scaffold or gantry. So, here it is basically not only using uh, will helpful for you know making the work as well all as that it will also carry uh, the material to transfer the material this traveler or crane that can be also used. This is normally you know the wooden batten being used. Now, the wooden scaffold is something also we call it platform gantry. So, where something again uh, similar to the needle one where you have to repair something at the upper portion and uh, you cannot disturb the uh, you know the part. So, maybe somebody can you know easily go through this particular space. So, we elevate it we create the platform and we create the space uh, uh, in between. So, that that can be used for the regular activity and proper care to be done with making the platform the plank floor the head all these things and uh, it is self supported uh, with your uh, structure. So, this is also helpful for a um, you know a purpose where you uh, have some you know busy road or something and you have your building just next to the road then this kind of platform gantry will help you. So, now uh, it is basically where in a you know end of with this lecture and we will try to see the different kind of arrangement. So, in this case if you see this is basically a local arrangement how the construction being done and the platform and you can see that how it is being supported. So, this put lock how this is connected to the wall and so as true with this. So, suppose you can see all those you know uh, punctures in that. So, that you know in the later stage you can uh, you know use the put lock to increase the height of the scaffold and it is made of the bamboo and you can see the height. So, that one can easily reach it. Now, compared to that here it is something uh, with made of steel those section is milled and the platform and again uh, you uh, this is something very important when you go for the construction work definitely for the high rise building. So, safety to be maintained. So, for that you have to have some guard rail. So, that you know during the construction there will be no such casualty happen. So, this is another type of scaffolding here and uh, like this is something where like uh, is a very huge one. So, this is also made of your bamboo and you can easily see those you know uh, bracing. So, one of the building that I have shown that where structural bracing is used to uh, give the lateral support. But now also for the temporary structure the concept is same because of the huge uh, vertical structure. So, there will be some wind from different direction. So, that may collapse. 
So, for that also the structural arrangement we have to put some bracing and you can see that uh, due to that uh, you know huge height and different platform and also it is not straight. So, in compared to that if you use your uh, steel members, so then it will be more stable. So, here you can see how this is being made. So, how the structure is formed, so how uh, this is being carried with uh, a pulley and then how the knot is being made to you know uh, make connection with the standard and laser. So, this is standard and this is laser and this is probably the put lock uh, attaching to the wall. So, this is how this is made and now this is basically in place of the bamboo how you can use the steel to make it more clean, more safe and uh, most importantly those can be reused. So, these are the couplers that uh, we I was talking about. So, how they are fixing it uh, different you know horizontal and vertical members with the tube and all and the whole structure can be made of the steel. So, mostly for the high rise structure uh, or maybe something good uh, developer construction company and all they use this kind of props because this is available with the standard height. So, that there will be no adjustment for the other case the bamboo based on something like we have to adjust it. So, uh, this are the another uh, example there are few props to be made like this. So, scaffolding is uh, basically very helpful to you know carry out the work and this is something like for a huge structure. So, uh, the complexity and uh, making those structure is very crucial and this is the first step where you just uh, start your structure making and then give a final look. So, making this temporary structure is also very important and we should also know uh, this kind of arrangement what are the available thing. Apart from that also during the foundation trenches and all we also use this kind of uh, you know temporary structure to support to you know stop the erosion of the soil or the falling the soil on the uh, trenches. So, we also create this kind of uh, you know separation. So, this trench is the uh, shoring being used. Uh, so, with that uh, like now uh, in this case what we have learned that the shoring is one where it is giving the temporary support to the unsafe structure, the other is the scaffolding. Scaffolding is just not to support the structure, it is to ease off the work of the construction and any uh, kind of finish work like paint, plaster and something and uh, in both the cases it may be uh, made of wooden, it may be made of steel or sometimes it may be uh, made of your truss uh, like uh, instead of a single tube or something like that. And the you know tying up it may be with the rope or it may be with some coupler. So, depending on the structure, depending on the scale of uh, the construction and all. Uh, available resources will decide upon that. So, with this we conclude here and uh, for further reading you can go through this building construction book by uh, Sushil Kumar, there are many books you can refer anyone uh, where you can get this kind of uh, stuff. So, with that I conclude here and then we will be again discussing in next lecture the frame structure uh, and uh, again I thank you all for taking part in this course uh, until we go for the next lecture. Uh, this is uh, uh, bye bye from my side, thank you.